Let me be the one for you. Tell me what man feel do. Falling in love with you. Let me hold you. Let me be the one for you. You already know this is BTS. Not being formal with me today, I got Lance White. And yes, sir. I'm sure a lot of people know who Lance White is. You know, I'm not even. <laughs> How to always bring it up because most of these people I know them already, but you know, I'm your host over here, Frost. So I've known Lens for a while, and it's only right if we have a a podcast that's talking about behind the scenes, what we right. do back here to bring some of I met Gillity the other day at the food joint, so I was like, you gotta show up at the yeah, show because yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, it's some people in OKC you can't keep them away from the yes. show, like it, it's hard to keep them away from this show. He's started, he started everything. He started back with when you mean everything, what do you mean? Music. Music. Okay. He told me something like I saw him post um what's the uh, uh, his, what? his 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 hit track like one knows that. Oh uh Oboso. Oboso. Yeah. And I was like, that's a classic. Yes. That's that, a classic. I, I remember when uh, we did when he did that track and we had to pull up man. Wait, OKC pull up. I wasn't here at that time, tell me. Yeah, OKC pull up, like a lot of people showed up. We had cars, uh, black man. He had T-shirts for everybody. I figured that out. Yeah. What What year was that? Well, I came here in 2016. I think that was 20. Man, that's way. That's way back. It was way back because when I came over, just I hadn't I hadn't started doing music yet. Yeah. Yes. So well, was, I know you haven't started doing it. Yeah. I'll talk about that in a little bit later because when I met Lens, Lens has a lot of work he hadn't put out yet. So mm -hmm. I know you hadn't started music at that time too. Yeah. So it, it's possible. What year was it? What year can you estimate? I want to say 2015, 16. 15, 16? Yeah, because I know after. after well, it's, not series, six, it's not 16 more than no, it's, 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 it's not 16. 16. It's not 16 because I know after, after he dropped that song he dropped his album yeah. and he and i had a conversation that's when he told me hey because i had i had like you said i had so many tracks and he listened to it he's like bro you need to release this stuff so i believe a year later that's when i started releasing songs i think so yeah i think because even when i met lent lent wasn't doing music like that and he had a lot of stuff <laughs> recorded I'm saying these are to the fans out there because it's a lot of people that have a lot of stuff in them like good work and you keep you keep it and you don't even know why you keep it because in the long run when someone asks you you have a, a justification for why you kept right. yourself but I yes. think in the long run music is supposed to be put out there for people to listen to it so far it's our fault we don't put it out there so yeah and the reason the reason you don't put it out is not because sometimes you think it's not good enough for the fans even though they always say put it out there and let the fans be the judge, but uh, you as an artist, you know when you record something like man, this is a hit, yeah, right? And you go ahead and release it, but some tracks you still need to work on it. Like uh, it's not ready. It might be ready to somebody else listening to it, right? The preview. Like I remember I'm giving you a couple of my songs and you're like, man, I gotta release this, but to me, I feel like it's not there yet. That I need to hold on to it a little bit longer. A lot of artists think about it like that way. That's why it's called a craft. Yes. Adam yes. told me one thing that's never gonna go. Well, it pertains to editing. Mm -hmm. He says editing is never um, completed; it's only abandoned. Mm -hmm. Because it's never gonna be a point where you're gonna get there and be like, okay, I've done this work and that's it. It's the same yeah. with music. When yeah. you're writing, you're creating a craft. You try to make something better. You keep switching the sounds here and there. Yeah. Keep switching the True. flow here and there. When you finally get there, you, you could be like. Now I'm over there. Yes. But yes. to the fans, probably that's not it. Yes. Yeah. But True. I've always said this before. It has to mean something to you before you can put it out there. Because yeah, there. it's yeah. a lot of music you probably have made and you don't feel the music. I'm feeling when we say go promote it. You don't even promote it. You don't share yeah. it. So <laughs> I think you got to be able to love the music yourself as an artist. <clears throat> like putting your best on it and put it out there. But I'm not going to talk a lot about Gilly T, who we started talking over here, because he has his own episode. But when I met Lens, Lens, exactly what he said with Gilly T and all, he has a lot of tracks he has not put out there. He's a yeah. talented artist. And, you know, we started working together. We ended up creating something big in Oklahoma City. We started creating a record label. We called it Black Wall Music. And uh, mm -hmm. for some reason, Black Wall Music didn't go <laughs> as planned. So do you yeah, want to dude. tell... Our, well, you know, our viewers and listeners about black hole music. Just make so, it short. So the the story behind black hole music is that when uh, the co co owner 
Let me put it that way. Yeah. Don Baggio. Don Baggio. I remember he was at my place and we just we we're just talking about music and all that. And he took a notebook and was just drawing out the logo. Yeah, that's where that's where black gold music came up. Yeah, originated from. So he just like, hey, let's let's just create something and we'll work together, you know. As a team. So we created black gold music. Started, I think how many songs did we released a couple of tracks, right? We released a couple of tracks because yes. most of my songs that I mm -hmm. list as an artist yes. with other people, including you and Banks, they are on that um black right. black yeah, music that page. Because we released yes. we, I think we released some tracks. And there are there are so many songs that we did that are still in the archive. It's still a lot of songs that's yes, like, that in the wait. Archive. I go over my email, yes. you go search Cricket Floor Studios, which is yes. Adam Studios. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of songs that have not been finished. That's the, yeah. that, that's the thing about music because most people think, you know, you just go write songs and put it out. No, yeah. it's, a, it, it, it's, it's a work a, in progress. It's a whole process. It's a whole process. And, and, it, and the thing is, because we're working with uh, multiple producers, we get to forget, like, we haven't worked with Adam for like, for time. a minute, for so, a minute. But I'm calling Adams though because I need him to send me some tracks. Like some of those tracks you're talking about, mm -hmm. there were some tracks we did together. I think it's at least two songs we've done together. I've not finished. Yeah. The song I've done by myself and a lot of them. Now I have Paragon Sound downtown, like the studio where you know I play my own music mm -hmm. to prove that even Adams raised us up. I'm most yes. my favorite. Yeah. My favorite dog is Cubase because he used to record in Cubase and the he pro. Still does. He still does record yeah. in Cubase. So he still does. You know, it's. It's great having Lens on this show because we started this together as entertainment and he's still one of the only ones that's still in it, you know, right now. And right now we're talking about black hole music. I'm asking about black hole music as if I don't know about it. He's talking about the logo the by just yeah. sketch. So yeah, he sketched that logo and you made you finalize it. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. I, I, designed, I designed the black hole music logo. Yeah, he, like I designed yeah, the logo. You finalized the logo and that's when we launched we launched black hole music. Yeah. We started doing songs on that on under that record level. We released a couple of tracks. Then we were trying down the road. We tried to sign an artist. Uh, what's a, what, what's her name? Um, um, Tracy. Uh, yes, Tracy. Yeah. That's her actual name, right? Oh. I, I don't know. Well, I'm telling you, my name is. <laughs> no, it is her. Yes, it is her actual name. Yeah. So we tried. We we have a couple of songs. She did a couple of songs on the. And the black hole music. She did. Even, yes. even Tim Clone and um, yes, even Tim Clone. Yeah, Tim yeah. Clone and Tracy. They did, Tracy. They did a couple of tracks on that on that uh, black hole music. But you know, you know how things go. You know, with artists and and label. Yeah. Sometimes you guys don't get along. Sometimes it's you're bound to have disagreement. So that's what happened with uh, between Tracy. So we had to part ways. What? The thing, I'll, I'll stop this to say the thing about labels is mm -hmm. you're dealing with the individual over here. You're, yes. you're trying to have them have that right. platform right. and you benefit from them as well as they benefit you become a star because mm -hmm. nowadays I'm looking at managing a few artists because I go, I can record music, a paragon sound, and I can make right. videos in the right. studio. I could as well just sit like so and do nothing for two years and nothing ever gets done. Or I could pick two or three okay. people that know Pick what the they're skills. doing, they got these skills and I'll work mm -hmm. with them and put them out there, right? Yeah. So that's the thing about labels because labels just come to help the artists in their own way and also benefit from them because if I take this kid to a show mm -hmm. and he comes back with two grand, then I'm, I'm like, oh, well, I might just keep a few hundred dollars to pay the studio bills, right? Right. So that, yeah. that was the idea with labels, but I think these people demand more. You want to tell us about managing people they, back home. What's the, what's the negative aspect of it? Man, the, the biggest the biggest, the biggest uh, uh, issue is the belief that the fact that you you are in America, the belief that the money is there, right? So they have that mentality that okay, if I'm coming to the label and the owner is in America, we have a on trees. Yeah. That's it. Yes, we get it on so, trees. So they already have a big list. Like man, I need a house. I need a, an allowance. I need this. So you're. As an artist, you're already requesting all of these things, but at the back end, what are you bringing on the table, right? Yeah, we know you have the talent, but that's it, right? So if you if you're already requesting all of this, you have a long list. You need to keep in mind that if you're signing that contract and the contract is five years, you better be ready to put in that five years and reimburse the owner because yeah. if the owner is investing millions of whatever, it's a lot. 
million, let's call right? it millions of francs CFA. Right. Because like, yeah. we're managing people back home. So, yes. it's a so, lot to, so if, if they are investing millions of francs into your craft, right, you should be able to, at the end of that five years, they should be able to regain back that money plus profit. Profit. Because mm-hmm. it's a business. You don't you don't go into business to make losses. Then you're in the wrong in the wrong industry, basically. Yeah. So on, unless even Dangote doesn't doesn't go into any transaction with the aim of losing money. I don't think anyone goes right. I don't think anyone goes into any transaction with the aim of losing money. Exactly. Not exactly. even us. Me and exactly. you and Bajo went into that transaction with other artists from back home. Right. Even if he was not making money in situ right at the spot, we were hoping yes. we're gonna make money make something. Money That's the reason why you gotta bring something to the table, as you said. Yes, you have to bring something. So when I when I see artists already requesting those things and they go on social media and they're bashing the label like, oh man, I need to get out of this contract. But you sign the contract. People are always people are always, got, people are always trying to shred contracts. You, you, yeah. you got you gotta read the label. contract. And I mean, I don't I don't want I don't want to bash anybody, but the case with Tracy, right? We did we gave her the contract. We gave her the contract, hey, take it, go read it. That's enough time for you to go look at all the loopholes, yeah. you know. Trying to cover it up. Yeah, make sure that hey, if I'm signing this, it's benefiting both of us, right? Because yeah, I get it that some some levels go in with the mindset of just ripping the artist off, right? But you, the artist, also have to play a part. You need to read that contract because there's not a gun. We don't put the gun on your head to sign that contract. You took your time read the contract and sign it. I think people easily get excited when they see someone true. want to invest in that's them. True. That's and that's true. that that's the point I want to put out there like don't ever get ex- don't ever get excited when it comes to labels and people investing yeah. in you because if you got that talent it's no point to be excited because somewhere down the line it's gonna show itself up. So don't get into I don't think you should get into a, a, a deal mm-hmm. that don't favor you just because someone's in a task or something like that. It don't work for me. Like it don't yes, make sense. It doesn't it should not I mean, even even if you think uh, that label is gonna open more doors to you, right? You still you still want to make sure that you, at the end of the day, you're gonna benefit from that contract. Welcome to Paragon Printing Solution, where all your embroidery printing dreams will always come true. We print on T-shirts, hoodies, tumblers. And for photo printing, we do canvases and frames, but also for vinyl backdrops, we do retractable banners and eight feet custom banners. We're back on BTS on Cut, you know, it's your host Frost and I'm out here with Lens White. And before yes, we sir. left, we were talking about, you know, the hassles and the pain, the trouble of managing other artists back yeah. home. Let's hold that over there and not talk about people. What about yourself? When we stop Lago music, you, you, you continue doing music. Yes, I, I still do music in my own way. I don't know what Don Baggio be up to, but it's uh, Don Baggio is mostly behind the scenes. He's always been behind the scenes, yeah. even even when we're working, because he was. If you ask me, he was kind of a manager, to us. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. after that, have have you had any manager or managers? Yes, I've had a manager, uh, Barry. Barry. Yes. Oh yes, <laughs> the same, probably the same Barry. Your Barry from yes. Kansas. Kansas. Yes, from Kansas. Yeah. She met She's me. She's in OKC she, now, right? Yes. She met me in uh, Wichita, went for a show in Wichita, I think uh, I was 20, man, I'm not good at dates, but that's that's the first time I met her in person, and she had heard about me, so we started working from then, uh, worked on a couple of tracks, she hooked me up with uh, Jay Martin and a few, you know, personnel in the, in the music industry, so yeah, she practically made more ways than very, I did on my own. Barry is very supportive. Oh yeah, she is. And she for is. some reason, Barry is so connected. I don't even know she how is. she is. <laughs> well, and this is the reason why I was working with Bajo in the first place, because Bajo is connected to yes. He knows a lot of people, not to right. take anything from Bajo. Right. That's why you should yes. see him like yes. a manager. Yes. And yes. to our fans out there, if you've not seen Bajo, you can look up the link on on, 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 on uh, Instagram, Don Bajo, he the Dutch. So, Barry too, when Tizzy came over here, that's how I knew uh, Barry was connected because uh, because she. I was trying to shoot the uh, 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 part of this episode with them over there, so okay. she was one that sent me their numbers and everything. So, and when I ended up working with her, I figured, like, oh hell, she's really yeah, really connected. That girl, that girl is connected. Like I have I have contacts of people that, and I didn't believe I could ever. If I wanted to use like 
a manager. Conventional means right. you don't work. You, you will not get you will not get such contacts. How did Barry get so connected though? She told me she's been in the industry like forever, mostly in the background. I'm asking her. I'm asking you because when I asked her, she t she told me she's just spotted for she, everyone. She's walk. everywhere. Like there's a there's this a uh, this a uh, promoter back home, uh, Pelagi. Yeah. Man, I've I've spoken. I got connected to Pelagi through uh, my manager, and each time Who I yeah, each time I talk to to that girl, she's like, man, that berry is everywhere. Like there are things I go to Facebook and I see comments that she's like she's on everybody's. <laughs> she's on yes, everybody's. Yes, that's why I say she's very in supportive. a good way though. In she's very supportive in a yes, good way because yes. she's out there posting stuff for people, yeah. sharing stuff for people. She's one of the first people I saw. She's the first person mm -hmm. to have noticed our um, um, Roku page was down. Our Roku because I have oh, a really? yeah we have a Roku oh, channel. Wow. If you have a Roku TV, any of the 56 million Americans, you can go up there and Google Pago Motion Pictures. You watch some stuff we do, but she was one of the only person to watch, okay. to figure out at one time it was yeah, down. Because, yeah, because if you have a Roku page as a developer, you got to go back there and maintain, maintain stuff and make sure everything yeah, runs, yeah. runs yes. up to date. And right. I was moving at this time, so at every one time I have a Roku TV posted on the wall, so every day I got to make sure the yeah, people that are watching this yeah. TV channel can always watch it. And I moved yeah. and I've not put my TV on the wall and yeah. during those two yeah. weeks she was one for me and she said, Oh your TV no, yeah, your Roku <laughs> channel is no longer working. And when I looked at the, the, the start, it was like two days ago, it stopped working because of a specific update. I'm like, damn Barry, you're so supportive. Yeah, I work with her is, I work with her daughter too though. I'm I'm yeah. really got a lot to work with her daughter coming up. That's that's why each time each time someone asks me, hey, who is your manager? And I said, they're like, Ooh, who is she? Then when I mentioned me, they're like, Oh really? That yeah, they know because they they know they know the girl, oh, I guess, they know her daughter like. I guess I'm gonna say Millie Millie is selling yeah, Millie, Millie is selling her mom bro. <laughs> Millie Berry is selling the other the actor Berry. Yes, yes. She is yes, selling her mom better. So no, she's she's very supportive. And, uh, like I said, uh, my level right now is thanks to her because it was just me trying to so what does Barry benefit from you? Does are you still um, what the relationship with you? Like, I'm not. We're, we're still good. We're good, even though she's not managing you right now. But we are still on good okay. terms. So down the line, she stopped managing you. Yes, down okay. the line, she had to take care of personal uh, stuff. So. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we. I mean, we, just as long as you you are on good terms because no. she she knows a lot of people though. We we are on very good terms. Okay. Yes. It's yeah. just that she had to step back of the so of, of oh. the responsibility of managing me to take care of the other guests instead of uh, personal stuff. But yeah, who do you think is losing in this in, in, in this situation? It's what I don't I don't think anyone is losing. Well, I think at this point we've we've learned so much from each other that we can actually the next step is just moving forward, right? It's just moving up. I like Barry to manage someone else though, cause she she knows a lot of people. I want her to manage. So she had asked me the other day. I'm like, I'm trying to work with the artist, and she's like, Oh, what city? I'm like, Nigeria. She's like, <laughs> So I'm like, What a camera, what a camera is doing for us, right? I made a studio downtown, and Banks, Banks to be called, and he was like, Oh. Um, um, it means Cameroonians are going to come. Like, I'm Cameroonians make music. It's me, you and it's me, you are late. So I mean, we have we haven't like yeah, like you said, it's just a few of us doing music now that people actually know. I think if we if we keep pushing, we're gonna see more push on them. Like you, you mentioned, there are a lot of artists at this project stuff. It was a lot of artists over there. Most the Cameroonians. Most Cameroonians. The problem with the with those art now the almost the week before that event, right? We had a, 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 a kind of like an artist come together at my place. By then the studio was still at home, okay. so all of most of those artists came to Big E. Um, um, Zani, a bunch of them, they came through and they recorded just okay, freestyle yeah. and everything. So when we finally moved the studio, it was that same week where they had to go to Tizi Pachak. So some of the artists that showed up at Tizi Pachak's place were because of us. It's because they came to the studio and then, you know, some of them, we just linked up some of them and be like, oh, French Metallic got them a connection to get to perform yeah, at the show. But, yeah. you know, we spoke about the, the, the show the last time it was lit. Those artists that came up, they made the show because right. I think the performance, that led up to the main event was better than the main event. Don't get me wrong, I'm just saying it. I just got to put it on that way. I was one of the artists that oh, we did that shit.
Yeah, it's up fair when